Hello folks. It is time for a bit of a Friday rant. First of all though, if you like what I do, please like the video. It does wonders for me in the algorithm and make sure that new people, more people, can watch my videos going forwards. So if you think you, other people get some help out of them or whether your friend will or whatever, share the video, share it around, do what you need to do and hopefully we can make the channel grow a bit. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So today is going to be a bit of a rant, but it is going to be a rant that I think has been, shall we say, uh, coming for a while. Because I've mentioned this topic quite a few times, that is the topic of role-playing game safety tools and whether or not they can actually be a detriment to a good time uh, playing RPGs on uh, either in person or online with your friends. I've had this happen quite a few times now and it's come up in Hobby Nightmares and quite often Hobby Nightmares will, shall we say, adjudicate what I do in 40k rants and this is one of those times because we've had several nightmares now where games have been kind of ruined by somebody saying look I'm not comfortable with e with S or X right or anything like that so we're, we're, I'm tanking the game I'm stopping the game I'm not going to play anymore and we need to move on from this scene if you don't know what RPG safety tools are Sometimes they're called lines and veils. Sometimes they are called, you know, uh, no-go areas. I, I've, I've heard that one, one phrase mentioned too. And they take the form of, of physically, you can have a card with a big X on it. And if somebody holds up that card during your role-playing campaign, if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or you're playing Vampire the Masquerade or whatever it is you're playing, if somebody holds up one of those cards with an x on it the scene stops you move on to the next scene and we, we never come back to that scene again because something happened in that scene that triggered the person holding up the card right now a bunch of you who are let shall we say dungeon masters or game runners out there mostly probably just turned in your seat a little bit in disgust of something that could happen to you at the tabletop right I've seen this happen before where somebody who is doing a Vampire the Masquerade game, for instance, is really, really, really queasy around blood, you know, and things like that. I've, I've, I've seen things like this happen before at, at the tabletop, and it tends to just annihilate the mood. The mood goes down, nobody wants to carry on with the game, and it just grinds these things to a halt. Because, quite frankly, everybody out there has a lot of empathy for everybody else, at least you should do. And so if somebody does declare to be having a pretty bad time because something in the game has triggered them somewhat, it's only natural to come down on their side and say, wow, I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I, I feel really badly for you. And that tanks the atmosphere of the entire game. And let alone that, but imagine being a dungeon master or a storyteller who has put a copious amount of you know, yourself, your time, your energy into building a world, into building a setting, into building a campaign, only for somebody just to hold up a card and say, no, we're not doing this right now, move on to the next scene. It would throw you for an absolute loop, and you would be, you would be struggling to figure out where to go next. You'd be, you'd be stuttering, saying, um, um, what, what are we, uh, okay, uh, so we can't do that, why don't we do this instead? Listen, it, I'm trying my best not to swear here. If you are going to a role-playing campaign, right, I will suggest you do one thing. And that is a session zero, where you all sit down and you discuss the kind of game that the DM, the dungeon master, or the game runner wants to play. The DM is putting the most effort in here. The person running the game is putting in the most effort to the entire thing. So their, their wants and their needs should be seen to first, right? If you don't want to play in their game, then you do not have to play in their game. You can go play in somewhere else, right? You can go do something else. We see more and more RPGs these days, like Cam Candela Obscura and other games like that. Uh, even Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, right? Which are so apologetic for the rougher edges of their game systems. And they seem to 
really want to strike home the fact that you can't offend anybody and you must always be as a gm you need to run the game but you also need to be a babysitter for everybody's feelings and i'm sorry that's not how role-playing games work they never have worked that way and they never will or should run that way right you are all adults at least you should be if you are playing in a tabletop role-playing game that has mature themes in it you need to sit down together and decide at session zero what kind of a game you're going to play and how you're going to play it and if your ideals for the game that's happening don't align with your dungeon masters or your game runners then you will, can feel free to leave and they can feel free to get somebody else in to come and play their game with them this has happened to me very, very recently. I went to a, a local cafe. I've told this story before, where I, I'm trying to get players together in my local area for a game of Zweihander, or at least it's kind of like Zweihander. It's very grimdark. It's very Warhammer Old World esque sort of a thing, and uh, they're going to play gritty mercenaries who essentially are the medieval fantasy version of Hitman agent 47 right they go around the world and they solve problems and by problems i mean they go and you know chop people's heads off and things like that and and you know if you've got a problem that you want it dead they'll make it dead right that's the kind of a that kind of thing on their guild and we're going to build a guild and build these dudes who go around solving issues they are muscle at the end of the day so I go to a local gaming cafe here in Liverpool, which is, again, it is known as being a very lefty city and is known for being a very lefty um, cafe, right? It, it has signs saying that they're an, an ally everywhere and things like that, but that's fine. I've never had any trouble in there, and I likely never will. They're all lovely people who like to give you a nice cup of tea, and I can sit there marking my essays and things like that without being bothered too much. Um, so I walk in and I go in with my, with my little poster for my role-playing game and I say, look, can I put this up? And they said, sure, you can, no problem. So I put up my poster and it has Gotrek and Felix on it. It's black and white and they're all dead muscly. And it's like, right, here's what we're going to be doing, right? And I started to get inquiries from my advertisement that I put up in this gaming cafe. And I started to have conversations with people on Discord who got in touch and said, yeah, you know, I, I would love to play in a game like this. I love Warhammer. Okay, cool. Excellent. Of the six people who got in touch with me, four of them wanted to discuss veils and lines before we went anywhere further in the conversation. Okay. One of these people said that killing, killing was off the table for them, and they wanted the game and the world changed to suit that whim that they, they didn't want to do killing they wanted to solve problems in different ways and to be honest with you i applaud that on some level because it would be kind of boring to go into a game like this and just go in with your you know with your blades whirring all of the time right to, to, to start mur murder hoboing right but at the same time saying and i said this to him i said listen this guy's in his 30s i said listen are you are you sure you don't mean that you want other opportunities to do other things apart from killing people? Because I rest assured that there will be other opportunities to do that, right? If you can roleplay it, you can do it in this world. No problem whatsoever. And he goes, no, I just don't want killing in the game at all. Right. So you don't want to do killing, right, in a game about killing. And a world that is grimdark and filled with people dying all the time. You don't want to cover that. Right. I think it's best that we... Uh, agree to let's walk away now and, and not play the game together right and veils and lines came up in four out of the six conversations that we had four of them and let me tell you something else Th we had four we had six players coming in two of them female four of them male guess which ones were the veils and lines not the girls the girls were all in there going can i be a female dwarf with massive muscles and i'm like yeah you definitely can be a female dwarf with massive muscles, right? How big is my axe, right? That, that, those are the questions I was getting from them. The dudes, though, were like, no, I, I don't want any of these themes in this game. And some of them were quite reasonable. Some of them were saying, listen, I don't want, you know, um, any sort of, um, how do I put it? 
Um, you know what I'm talking about. Violence. You know, that kind of violence against women. I don't want that kind of thing. I don't want anybody's, you know, grape or something like that going on in the game. And to which I said, I don't know why we need a rule for this, but I, I can rest assured you that will not be happening in my game. And again, we're strangers at the end of the day, so I was kind of like, okay, that's fine. But then once I... I always found this, and this is very interesting. As soon as I acquiesced to that demand, more demands then came up. Which is kind of weird. Very, very, very weird. Like, I, I would say, okay, yeah, 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 there, there'll, be no, there'll be no grapes in this game. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. None of that going on whatsoever in our game. You know? Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, well, I don't like vampires either. Are there going to be vampires in the game? What, well, dude, we're in the old world. Yes, there are the Von Karsteins are the coolest thing in it. What do you want me to do? They are the coolest thing in it. If you get to be in the same room as Manfred, you're doing well. Like, what is going on? Why? <laughs> it went from... A very reasonable demand, and then the demands, as soon as I acquiesce to that one, the demands get more and more and more prevalent to, we then get into, um, how to, preferences, you know? We go from black and white, no, I don't want uh, any grape in any grapes in my game, right? That's fine, no problem at all. We then, we then go from that to, I don't like vampires, can you not have them in the game, please? No. No, I will do what I want to do, because I'm the DM, I'm putting in all the effort here, Right? I've written a whole province of the Empire for you to run around in. I'm sorry. That's a preference. And it's, it's a weird thing that I noticed with all of them. As soon as I acquiesced to one demand, more demands started coming in. And, it, and it's just something that I, I just can't get through my head. Role-playing has become, recently, a hobby that is so brittle. It's so brittle. I remember back in the day, I remember being able to sit down with my friends, get some dice out, and just start playing a game, right? Playing a game and role-playing, and none of us ended up trying to be amateur, amateur dramatics people, right? There is a really good um, YouTube channel out there <clears throat> called Black Lodge Gaming. A wonderful little channel. It's brilliant. And they talk about this very, very, very well. And they say, look, the best way to approach a role-playing game is to method act. Okay? Put yourself in the shoes of the person in the, in the story and just act that way. Don't put on voices. Don't try and act like you're acting for in a theatre production. Don't try amateur dramatics. Don't do any of that. Just imagine you're that person and act accordingly. That's all you do. There is a clear difference between acting and role-playing. There is a difference. Every single person I tend to come across now wants to act. They don't want to role-play. My friends want to role-play, which is nice. And by friends, I mean if I'm sitting across the table from my friend Matt, right? And he's playing a big old dwarf pirate, which he was in our last game of Zweihander, right? Matt does not like develop a peg leg matt does not put on a silly accent matt does not try and you know uh, be a shrieking violet and do all of these silly voices and over exuberant method acting and things like no 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 what he does is he, he pretends to be a pirate a dwarf pirate that's it he's got the same voice and 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 he does actions that are totally in, ingrained with that character he may change the inflection of his voice a tiny bit but he knows he's in a role-playing campaign and he's embodying that character in the role-playing campaign he's role-playing he's not acting okay he's embodying the character he's naturally just take he's, he, he's sitting in the character's skin just sitting there having a giggle having a laugh but he knows that he's playing a role-playing game and he adjusts accordingly one thing I've noticed from these people who want these veils and lines is that they always seem to want to act. They always seem like they're standing on an amateur dramatics theatre board playing to an audience. It's cringe and it's not nice to, to, to see. It's just not. Because most people who do this aren't very good at it. And it starts becoming a bit... Ugh, right? 
that's just something I'm noticing. And you know what it is? Do you know what these veils and lines are? I'm going to have to be very honest with you as I try and close out this video. Um, they are literally boundaries where other people get to di dictate the game you want to play. They are weapons used by players who don't like what you're what you're doing. And so instead of saying, hey, that's not for me, I'll go somewhere else. They sit at your table and they try and adjudicate the kind of game that you're going to get to play. I'm serious. That's how sad these people are. If you ever pick up a role-playing book, a role-playing game book... And at the very start of the game, it starts apologizing for the edgier parts of its previous editions, like Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition does. Put that book down and go and buy another book with a set of balls. Because this game is not worth your time. It just isn't worth your time. I'm sorry, it isn't. Like, it just isn't. Um, Candela Obscura. Um, imagine the game that I wrote, Black Coats. Imagine that game neutered and filled with people with blue hair. And you've got Candler Obscura, right? It tells you everybody at the table needs to be, uh, you know, totally happy. And you need to avoid all of these themes because they're problematic. You know, and, and these themes, by the way, are not grapes or anything like that. They are all normal themes. They, they are all normal themes. Like body horror, right? Things like that. Avoid all that. It's problematic. No, I won't. That's uh, To me, that's as bad as my pet peeve for role-playing campaigns, do you know what it is? Segway, do you know what it is? It's when I pick up a book, and uh, I paid a lot of money for this role-playing book, and on the first few pages I read, oh, um, I realise that a lot of the, the rules in this book are a bit dense, but if you don't like them, or they, you feel like they're getting in the way of your fun, just don't use them. Ha ha ha, no, no, I paid £45 for this book, why didn't you just write the rules... And I will play with them. Stick to your guns. Stick to what you've written. Be brave. Put something out there that you think is cool. And if other people don't think it's cool, that's fine. They can go and find something else that they think is cool. That attitude is exactly the attitude that people who like to do RPG safety tools have with them all of the time. The entire world needs to acquiesce to my worldview and my little feelings. And if it doesn't, I'm going to cry until you all pay attention to me and stop what you're doing. That's where we are. This is not an argument against empathy. Okay? And there are certain things that you shouldn't need safety tools for. If you sit down at a table and somebody needs a safety tool to not have grape or grapes and things like that in their game. And you know what I mean by that, by the way. If you need a safety tool for that, don't play at that table. Because there are some weirdos sitting at that table that you don't want to be around. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. If you need a rule to stop people being weirdo nut jobs and really turning other people off from this hobby, I don't want to be at your table. If you feel like that is necessary with the people you know and that you've invited to your table, that is the biggest red flag I can have. If I sit down at your table and you introduce really stringent safety tools, you should expect us to be normal, empathetic and nice human beings who want to role play in a game as standard. That's the bog standard of where we need to be aiming here. And if somebody doesn't want to play by those rules and wants to be weird, we've seen it in so many hobby nightmares, gatekeep these people and get them away from your table. But don't annihilate creativity before it even begins by introducing stringent safety tools that don't need to exist. That's not what role-playing is. What do you think? Have I gone too far? Have I lost my marbles? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love your long time and I will speak to you on Monday for some more Hobby Nightmares. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.